Hey guys, it's a nice cool March morning. I worked uh, about 6 a.m. yesterday to about 3 a.m. I just rolled out of bed and thought I'd make some videos for you. What I got behind me here is Dayton Arcade. Uh, uh, this is actually just the most iconic building of the arcade. Um, it's got a facade designed after Guildhall in Amsterdam, Netherlands. So that's like a Dutch style right back there. Um, now the arcade is built between 1902 and 1904. This one particularly built in 1902. It's complex in eight but nine buildings, you, uh, each with their own style, but united around a center uh, court with a gigantic glass dome. Uh, you, you know, I got the fifth third tower over there and on the other side, the parking for fifth third. It's been one of those buildings, I guess you could say it's kind of like the Waldo where you know, just for years, people were like, you know, what, what are we doing with this old building? You know, it was originally designed to be uh, mostly a food market for fresh food. The guy that built it had a, I guess, a desire uh, to to bring fresh food market. You know, back around the turn of the century, that was a kind of a health initiative, uh, turn of the last century. And, uh, but then it, you know, supermarkets uh, became a thing and everything, this uh, co complex just fell on hard times. Um, so yeah, there's been talk of demolishing it. There's been a couple attempts at rehabbing it. And uh, until recently, er everything just fell through. Now I guess about 2014 when uh, Mayor Dayton and the city of Dayton just decided to shift away from uh, demolition as a strategy. They put about uh, 750000 in this thing. Mostly just fix the roof, you know, any leaky windows, uh, fix the gutters. I guess they called it Operation Dry or something like that. I don't know. They're just trying to keep the building dry. And then uh, recently, I think uh, like 2017, 2018, Fifth Third kicked in, another similar amount of money. Uh, and then I don't know, a couple years ago, there's actually a real plan to develop it, and they've slowly been working toward that. Um, it'd be, you know, retail stuff on the first, second floor, or first floor retail, all that, and then uh, put some, even some houses in there. And at first it would just be affordable housing using uh, federal money and state money to do that. But another thing is uh, these tax credits, they use historic preservation tax credits. Uh, there's federal credits and the state credits in Ohio is particularly generous with their state credits. That's actually one of the things that the uh, engineer from uh, came down and talked about the Waldo from Ohio said, you need to get those tax credits up. Because folks for years and years are always saying how much a Waldo would cost and Vandalia would say, you know, it's not really as much as you say because the federal credits. Well, after that meeting, uh, Martin Schaefer uh, was kind of, uh, head of Save Waldo Group, uh, Vandalia's representative in Clarksburg, but he's also a lobbyist, so he lobbied Governor Tomlin and got those state tax credits jacked up to 15%. So state and federal both, uh, if you invest in a building, you can get up to 35% back in tax credits that you then sell to a for-profit developer. Uh, so yeah, Vandalia had been talking this for years, but then after the uh, Robinson Grant was overhauled, I was reading a paper in there, the old crew was uh, City Hall talking about we need to meet with Vandalia tell you about all these tax credits that are available I'll holler at you later